have put an awful lot of work into making sure that this house is as insulated, as airtight, as weatherproof as I possibly can. I've put in rock wool for all the exterior walls. I've spray foamed the rim joists in the basement. I have poured in tons and tons of loose fill into the attic. And the one thing that I managed to forget is the actual attic hatch. So far that's just a piece of plywood and because it's getting really cold, the plywood is starting to warp. It also has no insulation behind it, so I need to do a little bit of work to make this into a proper attic hatch. You can pretty clearly see how we're lifted at this corner. And uh, when we try to level that out, we've got a pretty good rocking motion here. So the plywood is just warped up this way. We're gonna try to get this out. This is gonna have to get trimmed down a little bit because it's a little tighter than I'd like and then build a two by four support frame for it. So I don't know if you can see, but we've got probably about an eighth of an inch bow here. And what I'd like to do first is vacuum the dust off of this thing. So we got the big dust chunks off. We're gonna wipe it down a little bit too. Hopefully you can see a little bit better here how rounded this is. The way I want to deal with that is build a frame out of two by fours and put it on this side and use screws to pull this corner up and this corner up. And that will also give me space to insulate in between and then on top. But first, because this is too tight, I'm gonna take this down to the table saw and zip off about an eighth of an inch there and an eighth of an inch here. So let's just check this for fit. Much easier. Now from this side, we're going to get some measures. 20 and 3 quarters by 31 and 3 quarters. That's nice. So I can do two pieces of 20 and 3 quarters. And then I can do 31 and 3 quarters minus 3 inches is 28 and 3 quarters. And 28 and 9 16s. So if I cut those four, then I can bring them back up, screw them on here, and we're good to go. Now, the astute among you will have noticed that uh, this math adds up to more than 96, which means I had to steal a piece of lumber from one of my really janky cart stands. I've got my lumber sort of laid out. Now I need my driver and some construction screws. I sure hope my construction screws are in the basement. Yay, construction screws. Okay, I've got my driver and my construction screws. So next bit is I want to get these more or less lined up. I want to get a little bit of wood between the two by fours and the plywood and between the two by fours themselves just because like it's YouTube you got to use wood if you're not using pocket hole screws you got to use wood and then flip it over and get to screwing something kind of like that elegance and grace right here on display I want to get it just a little bit past the bottom of the plywood so it can be filled easily and made to look nice and pretty. Again, just a little bit below the surface there. And as long as we are going to be filling this, it doesn't really matter very much if I get this perfectly centered. All right, wipe up some of this extra glue because of the weird shapes of things. I mean, squeeze out. This is 100% squeeze out. Checking to make sure that's down all the way. And now the glory of screws. See how it sucked it down like that? Very pleased. And get two more in here and then I want to fuss up the ends because you can see it's tilted out just a little bit and I don't know if that's the plywood or the 2x4 or what but I want to solve that and get a screw started apply some brute force leverage oh this is gonna be awkward Am 
Might want to redo that one. And over crank it just a little bit. So that when it settles back, that is basically perfect right there. Well, that really wants to bounce back. Yeah, thought that was gonna strip out. Yay, dimensional lumber. Now that just does not want to behave. Can't win them all. I mean, for the sake of 330 seconds, there's a limited amount of fuss I'm willing to do. One more piece, and then we can start getting the foam in. In framing, anything can be a hammer. Anything can be a hammer. Tap, tap, tap. Oh yeah, look at how it sucked that in. Beautiful. This is a full eighth inch difference here. Uh, that's just dimensional lumber for you right now. Now it's at this point that a lot of people might be very concerned and say, oh my goodness, you need to make sure that still fits. You need to make sure, and I've got like no concerns at all about that. We will go and test it because boy, wouldn't it be a shame to have all the rest of the work be a complete waste. But I am basically 100% sure that this will fit. Partly because I did shave down the eighth of an inch and partly because it's a rectangle and not a circle. Maybe in my next house I should build a circular attic hatch. Top of this is swelling here. Well, I could have still fixed it after anyway. That's what I get for letting other people work on my house. That was the uh, the framer who built the roof, put that in, and he kind of had no cares at all for um, whether the lumber was straight or not. Well, if he had cut it square, it would have been fine. Let's give that a go. There we go. All right, let's get these screws back in and then we can start cutting some foam. That'll be a lesson to me for being a little bit too cocky about it. <laughs> if I hadn't checked this, I could have still fixed it in just about the same way even after the foam was in. It just would have been a little bit more awkward. So good thing to check your stuff, especially when you have let someone else do some of the work on, on the project that you're working on. Because I had the framer who built the structure of the roof build the attic hatch hole, and because he was like just banging it out as fast as he could, there's some lumber that's pretty warped and cupped and bent and that made it actually much more narrow at the top by like at least a quarter inch than at the bottom. I wasn't able to find my drywall square, so I have to use my straight edge. Gonna be fun to vacuum this stuff up later. Okay, we're just a hair long. I want to get this to fit as tightly as I can to provide as much insulation as possible. That's pretty snug in one way. And a little bit too snug there. 
Now, if you're gonna try to take on a project like this, or if you ever have to glue foam board insulation for any reason, make sure you take the time and check the data sheets as to what kind of adhesive will not destroy the foam board. A lot of adhesives have chemicals in them that are absolutely destructive to foam. We'll just straight up melt the foam. So make sure you check and see what the manufacturer recommends. I am using PL300 specifically for foam board. Won't burn through foam. And I will give this a quick little dust. Don't sleep yet, I'm not done streaming. Now that is not a terrible fit. There's the first one. There's two. Foam really kills blades quickly. Next piece, here we go. Now what would really be ideal would be to, when you're spray foaming the basement, your rim joists or whatever else you absolutely have to spray foam, if you could get the guys to shoot into this box that you've made. So you can see I've got some definite gaps here. We'll just try to slip some little extra bits of foam in. So we're up to R15 now. Just shave this little corner bit off here. Did I mention that foam can destroy blades? Now that we've got it passed, the top of the little bit of frame box that we built here, the box frame, I can start making these pieces wider to closer match the actual outside of it. And that'll help with a little bit more insulation. Ooh, black steel. Just like my cutlery. Oh, that's a lovely sound. Each of these is supposed to be R5. So we got 15, 25 there, 30, and then we got four more in here. So we should have about R50. Now it's not gonna be a real R50 because there are gaps on the side, but it will be as good as I can do, especially with the amount of material I have right now. I want to just make sure I've got a little bit of a gap all the way around. Moose is a kind and, and gentle creature. As demonstrated by the rescuing of moths, butterflies, and spiders out of the basement. I think that'll be pretty okay. Okay. Oh no, bit of a scratch there. That's okay, painter can fix that. Time to see if I can get this to sit up in there. Oh. There we go. So that fits. And you can tell already, it's much more even across here because of the new frame. Now this is not the last thing to do if you wanna really properly insulate your attic hatch. So we're gonna push this back up and just rest it up off the side a little bit. The last step, if you wanna really improve the insulation value of your attic hatch, especially if you're in any of the colder climates is getting some expanding foam in on the inside ledge below the attic hatch. So I bought two sizes because I wasn't 100% sure which would fit in my little lip here. And the other one, I'll just end up returning. We're gonna be sticking out just a little bit here, but I'd rather a little bit too much than definitely not enough. So the first part is make sure this is nice and clean. <laughs> vacuum got most of it. I want to get as good a seal as I can, so I'm going to come and actually right dust that off. So we'll take some paper towel and the only cleaning chemicals that Canadians ever use. A bit of Windex here. And just try to get the last little bits of dust off of here. 
Now this part is something you can do even if your attic hatch is already insulated, but you don't have the foam because the foam can actually make a surprisingly big difference. Now you don't want to stretch this stuff when you're installing it and you don't want to try to turn corners with it either. So just get it as far back into the corner as you can and then cut it. There we go, nice and snug right into the corner. Now I will stretch this one just a little bit to try to get it right up to the other end of that foam. And get a pretty decent air seal here. Oh yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Maximum cinematic experience here. Now that, you can see it compresses the foam just a little bit. Right in there, you can see just a little bit of compression all the way around. And that is gonna be a pretty all right attic hatch. There we go, so that took me about two hours and that was with recording and streaming and, and fussing and junking and stuff. Probably you'll already have some insulation on top of your attic hatch, it might just be a little bit of bad insulation. And it's very likely that you won't have any of the tape foam, the foam tape, the compression stuff. That will be the biggest impact. But if you can throw some more insulation in on top, whether it's rigid foam or bed insulation, you'll definitely be able to notice a difference. I have enough scraps here. I could have made at least one more layer of insulation for the attic hatch, but I didn't have enough caulk for it, nor did I have the inclination. It's already at R50. Anything more than that would have been more than the attic itself. And there are other issues, like it's not a tight seal along the side, so like, you know, ring it in once in a while, but, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll build a birdhouse out of it. What do you think?